So on the bench today we have the HP, whatever it is, 10638A, the Gother, courtesy of Marcel. Uh, and it's a piece of kit that goes with the cesium clock to get the real performance out of the cesium clock. Extra fine resolution lets you help uh, tune that C field for your Zeeman field splitting. So hello and welcome back. If you follow the channel, you might have seen the video where I explain how an atomic clock actually works. We fired up an HP 5061B cesium clock from the 1960s. It was famously used for the first direct confirmation of the dilation of time effect as predicted by Albert Einstein's relativity theory. As the explanation of the clock was getting more and more complicated, I left out the C field and its prominent adjustment button, which looks like a miniature clock with a black face and white hands in the middle of the control panel. But it's not a clock, it's a precision adjustment knob. The C field is a small magnetic field inside the cesium tube, which adjustment is quite delicate and quite important. It is needed to extract the ultimate precision from our clock. We are planning to perform this adjustment procedure, which involves yet another quantum experiment, in an upcoming video. However, before we can do that, we need to revive this very special instrument, the HP 10638A degausser, which is called for in the procedure. It's super extra specific. It is only used with the HP 5061B clocks with the high performance tubes, which is the ones we have. As you'll see, it is the king of precision degaussers. Since we're using the option 4 high performance tube, it has the uh, ability to use this degausser to help remove that. Right, right, right. That's something that's, field. something that's specific to the better option 004 high stability, you know, high performance, performance tube. tube, which is the one you have in your clock. So we're going to try to make it work today, uh, but the, the gosser is just there to remove any field that might have accumulated in the tube while it was operating in a specific location. Yeah. So anytime you move it, you're supposed to redo this procedure. Right. And what the gosser does, it removes magnetic field. How do you remove magnetic field? Well, you might have seen that in my previous video. This is a demagnetizer that I use for tape heads. And what it does is just, it's a big magnet at 60 hertz. And then you flip the magnet back and forth. Well, it will do it because it's powered by 60 hertz. Mm -hmm. And then you reduce progressively the amount. And then at the end, you should be at zero magnetic field. So right now I have a, a, a screwdriver that will catch. Uh, screws. But I've never tried it with a screwdriver. Whoa! It certainly pulls it. So you want to do this and then whoop. So usually for screwdrivers you would have a much much bigger thing. So this is meant for um, head, the tape, reader head. There we go. I did it. Partially. It's still a little bit at the tip. So anyhow, what? This guy is supposed to do, it does it, but the HP way. The gossers are usually pretty rough affairs, just a big magnet with alternating current and sometimes a way to pull the magnet away in a progressive manner. See this big tip degausser from HP. All there is in it is a giant 60 Hz magnet and a fan. So it's a su super simple machine. You put your tape in. Push it in into the magnet, turn it on, start the gossing, and it just spins the tape and take it out of the magnet progressively. Our HP 10638 degausser is a super refined version of this. Instead of the 60 Hz, it has a very low frequency electronic oscillator, a calibrated current driver to precisely control the amount of magnetization, a very slow perfect exponential decay generator, and a digital timer. There you go. 
no more magnetic data on this tape it has a perfectly calibrated uh, field actually it shoots into a coilless inside the tube but it, it has a perfectly calibrated intensity and then it does the super duper exponential we explain how that works and uh, well we don't know if it works <laughs> we're going to test it and then uh, from there do the calibration procedure for the Zeeman line in the clock right now we need to figure out uh, what our oscillator period is so it's like a few seconds in each direction the field is not 60 hertz very 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 slow so here is the schematic with my nicely degaussed uh, screwdriver that is the 2.4 second oscillator then you have a counter and that's to count the it's very long seconds it's survived by 512 this is 20 minutes a 20 minutes timer here is our exponential current generator and it's done with a capacitor and an op amp so there's an integration and then which controls the current into the coil is it a relay that does the, yeah and the relay does the two direction of field click 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 so we should hear it we usually connect it to the cesium clock and uh, that's that's what powers it um, but to test it you can hook it up to two power supplies need plus minus 15 volts and 28 volts instead of the coil we have a resistive load 0.5 ohms they tell you everything in the manual and then we are looking at pin six of this guy which is this which should be our 2.4 second oscillator the hp manual goes sort of crazy on how to check this already over engineered degausser it calls for a digital counter timer a dvm and a chart recorder i have pseudo modern hp equivalents for the counter and the dvm but for the chart recorder i have the real 1960s thing the HP 7132A dual pen strip chart recorder. Oh boy, oh boy, what a good excuse to geek out checking vintage HP gear with more vintage HP gear. And then they tell you to use a, a counter to, to do that. So super precise measurement. And then in the manual it tells you, well, you know, if it's between 2.4 and 2.8, it's good. <laughs> so you do all that complicated super precise stuff for absolutely no reason but this is the way this is the hp way <laughs> and well you know what marcel good news your uh your box works i need the oscillator so we see it yeah 2.75 seconds so it's just within spec in the <laughs> revised 2.8 second specs so it's a little leisurely this is one of the the oldest units uh out there this is very early serial number so it's probably a little tired by now but still working we can make it perfect we can adjust the the, the resistor if you want uh, it's within specs i think within spec all right we should leave it okay 2.75 seconds now they they want us to measure one of the pins of the divider that toggles every 17 to 22 seconds so here you can get the other one that's so zero it's clicking reset yeah okay and then i go click i don't see gating you want a plus and b minus there Hmm. They just lit. Yeah, it did. Yeah. The gate is on. So I'll give it another 12 seconds. Oh, because it, it, it might have... It's a very long period. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. 22! Whoa! Yeah, we're right on the, on right on the money. Mm -hmm. 22 seconds. Okay, well, we could have measured it with a stopwatch, but we did it with... The counter. I didn't know it could count such long intervals, so I learned something. All right, so far so good. So now there is a freaking old op amp uh, that does the exponential, and we it has to be trimmed to zero, like all the older op amps is at offset. 
So in order to do that, we need to short the big cap, that's the one that does the exponential. And that's to make sure that at the end of the exponential there is absolutely no field, right? That's, uh, that's the op amp that controls the current in the court. The end point. Okay, so we have to remove the side panel and access the freaking thing. Alright, and then I'll give you think think think. Okay, you're minus fourteen microvolts and you want to bring it back up. Okay, keep going, here you go, excellent, so zero <laughs> point something, okay. okay, so we have adjusted, uh, so this definitely was out of spec, so good that we took care of it. Well, I think we are ready for the big uh, exponential thingy. Calcium distribution. Remove the short from across C2, and we just check that out, all right. So that's the final setup. We have the box in operating condition. Uh, this is our load, represents the, the Gaussian coil, Gaussian coil into the unit. The little pickup resistor to bring it to the chart recorder and this is going to plot the current, which should go back and forth and decrease exponentially. I think it's all good to turn it on and you press start. And oh, wait, 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 wait. I need to go down and I need to go on. Go for it. You can already see our nice. Yeah, 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 yeah it's, ex it's exponentially decaying. It's a very scientific degausser, and then you can see the the maximum voltage, which is the maximum current actually, going down. And I think they have a spec on how low it has to go after a certain number of minutes. to go. Looks good. All right. Okay, we have that. Let's see what don't read with the other curve right here. All right. Okay, so that will be our next curve. And the next curve is the low, so we have to recalibrate this a little bit off camera. Okay, so are you on the low setting? Yeah, okay, low. hold on. I need to get my paper going. Bend down. You go. And that's a 22 minute test. And that's at much higher sensitivity. You can see there's some noise in the, in the thing now. We did have more than 10 volts, 12 volts. And this is good. Okay, so now I just have to hope that I have enough battery to last for 20 minutes. <laughs> I think I will just call it quits at this moment. It, it will turn off automatically after it's 20 minutes, but I think we have it tuned perfectly where it, it goes to vanishing small voltage. So we're tuning it good. So that's the high and that's the low degaussing. It's going to be the gauss to perfection. All right. All right, we are very proud of our exponential plots that look like perfect California earthquakes. Next step will be a lot more arduous as we will embark on a quantum Zeeman experiment to tune our clock C field to perfection. See you in the next episode.